What's good, crime family? Hope you're having a good day today. If not, I hope the video will bring a little light to your day. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're finna check out film theories, the hidden lore of Skibbity Toilet. So let's go ahead and get straight into this, man. I'm trying to get some background information on the actual meaning behind it, all this, because I'm really enjoying the content. Shout out to the original content creator, Film Theory. I'm gonna leave the original video link in the description. Let's get into it, turn it to the bigger video, and let's go. My theory's ridiculous. Killus, killus, killus. Fur the ori hidden floor. Yes, yes, the ori ori D D the ori hidden floor. Yes, yes, the ori ori D D. He made a remix? <laughs> I'm done. Let's go. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that need needs you to skibbity dom dom that subscribe button. Yes. Yes. If you haven't seen yes. the astronomical rise of the series Skibbity Toilet over the last few months, get your head out of the toilet and let me tell you that no one, and I mean no one, has seen this much success so quickly on YouTube before. As I write this episode, the That's channel's facts. creator Defa- That's facts. Uh, I can't say his name, can I? Fine. How about I make it classier for you? Defuk Bohem is getting somewhere between 3 and 4 billion views a month with a B. God Those damn. are numbers that are so big they'd make Mr. Beast blush. And it's not just a lot of random views either. People are sticking around for this thing. The channel had about one and a quarter million subscribers when it posted the first Skibbity Toilet video back in February. Now, just five months later, it's already past 20 million. God so yeah, to say that this thing has taken over YouTube, it'd be a major understatement. In one of the episodes, one of the titular Skibbity Toilets literally destroys YouTube HQ in a- Like, for all my YouTubers out there, the power of shorts right now is so insane. Like, if you're not doing shorts, like, you definitely need to look into it and figure it out, bro. Because it's, it's very much needed. Like, because a lot of his content is definitely shorts. A not-so-subtle metaphor for how this show has broken the website. Skibbity Toilet has fully taken advantage of YouTube's push for shorts content. And it has rode that wave to create a level of virality that has never been seen before. So, those are the numbers, but what is it? Well, it's a head in a toilet. Yep. It's some Gmod animation singing a song. Yeah. The internet is truly a weird and wonderful place. No, if I'm I love being it. completely serious, that's just how the whole thing starts. As the series goes on, the whole thing evolves into a full-on cinematic war between toilets with human heads and people with camera heads. Complete with massive titans, mind control, and, wait for it, hidden lore! And I gotta say, that's what after we for. every episode of the series multiple times, getting that darn song permanently etched into my brain, what became clear to me was that Facts. this goofy meme show wasn't just about being lol so random. It's also not content just remaining as an epic toilet action anime. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Probably should rephrase that one. Instead, there's an entire meta story buried in this thing. A story about the changing world of entertainment and the fight for survival of art. Yeah, this, <laughs> this man's face in the toilet, he's trying to teach us a profound lesson about the meaning of art. And once you see the story really? that's hiding right in front of your eyes, it becomes clear where the no story way. is ultimately gonna end. So grab your knob toilets, plungers, and KPRL speakers, loyal theorists, as we flush ourselves deep into the fever dream that is Skibbity Toilet. Now, the details for the... See, it's like the more I watched it, like, the first, you know, about... 15 episodes you know it's more funny but the more i watch the more i realize this is just not like some funny thing like there's actually a story being told Base story here are pretty that's why i'm watching this video. the whole thing starts when a man's head appears out of a toilet and starts singing a mashup of the 2007 song give it to me by timbaland and the 2022 turkish song called dom dom yes yes by bisser king but things quickly escalate from there the toilet heads start to spread pretty soon we see an army of these toilets marching or rather sliding their way down the street military parade style. They clearly pose a threat considering they run over people, they shoot lasers, they even transform I've never humans seen into more skibbity toilets. Pretty I'm soon done. they've established their own cult-like religion, a police presence, they even have themselves a leader of the army in the form of the G-Man from Half-Life. For those of you who don't know, in the Half-Life games, the G-Man is described as this sinister, interdimensional bureaucrat. And he has this strange reality bending power, so why not just throw him into a show about evil toilet men? Very quickly it becomes apparent that the people of this universe are no match for the toilet terrors. By the time 
time episode 6 rolls around, we pretty much stop seeing humans altogether. Enter the cameraman. People with cameras for heads. Pretty self-explanatory. But it quickly becomes clear that these oh, characters so serve both cameraman. literally and figuratively gotcha. as our point of view. Pretty much all episodes are shown from the perspective of one of these cameramen, often ending with the POV character either giving a thumbs up to one of their comrades or being killed at the hands of one of the skibbity toilets. This ragtag group of cameramen have made it their mission to eliminate the skibbity scourge. They form an organized militia, they fortnight dance away from the police, and then they form <laughs> Facts, unlikely I love alliances with other species that inhabit this world. The speaker men and the TV men. Two other groups of creatures that are just here for some reason. Probably better suited for a radio shack than the front lines. And together they plan to protect the planet from these porcelain pirates. And yeah, that's pretty much about it in terms of broad strokes. The rest of the series basically follows a fairly standard formula. Well, I mean as standard as a show about sentient monsters from Bed Bath & Beyond gets. We constantly see the cameramen inventing some new technology, such as their giant toilet kicking boss robot. In turn, the toilets repurpose the discarded remains of their fallen foes to become more and more powerful. This cycle of escalation repeats over and over again, eventually leading to where we currently are in the story, with giant kaiju level battles between the G-Man toilet and the various titan robots that are created or partnered with the cameramen. And that, to 99.9999% of people, is what the story of the series is. But I'm here to tell you, it is so much more than that. The battle between the toilet heads and the cameramen is really symbolic of the battle between YouTube content and traditional medias like the film industry. Yes, I'm really? feeling okay, and no, I don't want your long sleeved jacket even though it looks very pleasant and warm. Skibbity Toilet is, at its core, a, a story minute. about how entertainment is changing, and how the series creator Dafik Boem is gonna be the one that merges those two worlds together. It sounds insane, right? I know! That's why I'm so excited about this one! Let me explain it to you. As you might or might not know, this series is littered with models, assets, and references to an age gone by on the internet. An age before YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, dun, for our dun, Gen dun. Z and, and frankly most of our millennial audience, there was a time where internet videos didn't solely exist under the careful watch of Google and YouTube. In the beginning, the world of internet video was splintered off from each other. Sites like Newgrounds, Albino Black, Sheep, and Ebombs World is where you'd go to find the memes, viral videos, and animations. This is where internet meme culture truly began. Yeah, Charlie, we're going to Candy Mountain. Not to be too internet boomer about it, but there was a time that when you saw a funny video, you'd have to send it to your friends via email. Yeah. Yeah, that platform that your parents use for work these days, it used to be where you got all your lols from, like the Numa Numa guy and I'm a snake. And one of the biggest styles of video that arose from this early internet age was the genre that would eventually come to be known as the YouTube poop. Ironically enough, the style of a YouTube poop just predated the age of YouTube. These videos would involve taking clips or assets from TV, film, and music and just mashing them all together into an unholy stream of consciousness. There's only one real solution to this mess. Um, a stray Christmas what in the world? Hey, the internet back then, very different, but still very much the same. The fact that I was around for a lot of this stuff, but I do not know anything about any of this stuff. Well, I mean, internet wasn't as easy and accessible back then, so, yeah. By know. the way, I didn't edit that clip at all. That is it unedited in its 240p goodness. Did these videos make sense? No. Was it insane? Absolutely. Did any of it matter? Who cared? Anything goes. It was the earliest days of online video. For the first time in history, you could literally make anything you wanted and upload it to a website. Anything that came out of your head. In the 80s and 90s, if you wanted to make your own movie, you needed a video camera, the ability to cut and edit film, a platform to share your creations, all of which were either prohibitively expensive, difficult to achieve, or quite frankly just Big didn't facts. exist. In the early 2000s though, free software like Windows Movie Maker opened up the world of filmmaking to a wider audience than ever. One company that really embraced the wild west nature of the internet was Valve. Today they're best known for creating Steam, but back in the day, believe it or not, they used to make video games. They were responsible for tentpole series like Half-Life, Counter-Strike, Portal, Team Fortress, Dota. Valve dominated the gaming scene, and the one game that truly embodied both their gaming ethos and their embrace of the online was Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod was a sandbox game where players could mess around with the physics, objects, and assets found in Valve's popular franchises, and then use those to create their own little movies, games, and shorts. This eventually evolved into the creation of Source Filmmaker in 2013, a video editing tool that allowed creators to more easily create funny videos just like they had with Gary's Mod. And this mm. proved to be a godsend for YouTube poop creators. If you've ever seen a video featuring characters from Team Fortress 2 doing insane things, it's probably created using SFM. What in the world? 
Hey. In fact, hey. Defuk Boem, creator of Skibbity Toilet, as we all know, originally made a name for himself online by making these sorts of videos. SFM content exactly like this. I mean, unless... Oh, so he been making content for a while. Six years ago? He been in the game for a minute. So that lets you know that it actually takes time. Like, nothing is going to come overnight. And you never know when it's going to be your time to really take off. That's why you got to stick to it, you know? I mean, not saying that his videos weren't doing well then, because look, he still got literally millions of views. But, you know. Unless I'm wrong, Skibbity Toilet seems like it still is being created in SFM. So why the big trip down memory lane? Well, I believe that those edgy videos, those YouTube poops that came and went with internet trends, Trends, I believe that those are what the toilet heads in Skibdi Toilet represent. Look at the evidence. First, there's the fact that the characters are literally toilets. The place where you poop, like a YouTube poop. Pretty direct connection there. Second, there's the fact that the okay. heads of all the Skibdi Toilets are straight from Gary's mod, Half-Life, SFM, drawn yet another direct connection. There's also some more subtle hints as well if you look between the lines. In episode 4, there's a subtle background detail that shows how humans become toilet people as soon as they're exposed to the influence of the toilets. We pan across a normal restaurant, the toilets march in, so Suddenly, oh, people are transformed into more toilet heads. Some of those toilet heads even rise through the ranks, appearing in later episodes as leaders of the toilet army. It is the definition of virality. The toilet people are a disease that's spreading, just like a video going viral in the early days. We also know that the events of the series are happening sometime in the past. In episode 20, after going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the G-Man, the camera titan flies away, flying past two very important buildings, the Twin Towers. Notice here how it's an exact replica, straight down to the spire at the top of one of those buildings. This tells us that the events of the series predate the events of September 11th, 2001. Now, admittedly, YouTube know that. didn't exist back then. They originated back in 2004, but websites like Newgrounds did exist back then. And Gmod videos were also big in the early internet days, like around 2006. So while it's not an exact timeline match, this toilet world isn't meant to be some dystopian future. Instead, it's much more of a dystopian past, a reference to an earlier time gone by. Also, just take a look at the way that the Skibbity Toilets get stronger throughout the 50-episode series. While the cameramen develop new technology and techniques to get the upper hand in the battles, the toilets instead repurpose. They remix. They reuse the stuff that the cameramen leave behind. If that spirit mm. of remixing isn't just the pure essence of what is YouTube poop, I don't know what is. And then look what you have on the flip side. You have the film, music, and television industry literally represented by audiovisual equipment. Cameras, speakers, TVs. It does not get more direct wow. than that. Who else would serve as the perfect antagonist for the literal embodiment of YouTube poop than legacy media? Digital content like YouTube poops are made from reusing and rehashing content from those three industries. Just like how the Skibbity Toilets get stronger by repurposing the tech that they find on the camera, speaker, and TV men. Need more proof? The camera, speaker, and TV men being metaphors for the big three media industries has actually been teased throughout the entirety of the series. Who would ever thought like something so simple, like watching a funny video, can turn into a, like a deep lore that has layers and layers. And... <laughs> At first, you just think it's funny, and then you realize, you know, like, wait a minute, this is trying to say something, <laughs> you know? Back in the beginning of Skibbity Toilet, when we were just dealing with toilets and cameras, we could see a clear hierarchy amongst the ranks of the cameras. Well, the grunts were all the small, closed-circuit TV-style cameras. The more advanced and the more movie-like the camera became, the higher up it was. The big movie studios were literally the most powerful entities. Also, take a look at how the TV Titan goes about destroying the toilets. It uses this sound. an awful lot like the old THX intro sound. Facts. I couldn't think of where that sound is from, but that's exactly it. Furthermore, that's there's it. the main theme song that's used by the speakermen whenever they attack. That sweet bop is the 1985 song Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fears, who apparently are still touring. Good for them. Not only is this song very on the nose in terms of the theme for the series, two factions at war trying to rule the world, but it's also just an old song from the 80s. It's dated, just like the media it's meant to represent in the series. Media that in the real world is actively fighting off the digital video threat. But there's something off about that, right? It feels like the series wants us to be rooting for the cameraman. In fact, there's this one scene in episode 49 that clearly establishes... Nah, like, before he even say anything, when I did my reaction, I was rooting for the cameraman, which I know now that our cameraman. I was rooting for the cameraman, but with knowing what I'm knowing now, I don't know. The toilet heads as the bad guys. Occasionally throughout the series, you'll have a character speak in some distorted voice. What's actually going on there is that they're speaking in reverse. And in that particular episode, the TV says to the toilet what sounds like, you are so bad, when the whole thing's reversed and cleaned up. 
But, uh, what in the no world? world where we should be rooting for traditional media rights, especially when you're talking about a digital series. I know the show's odd, but the idea that we're supposed to be sympathizing with some of the least sympathetic industries on the planet seems like a step too far. Meanwhile, wow. we're supposed to dislike the internet video side? I mean, the series got popular because of internet videos. Spoiler alert, singing meme face in a toilet? Yeah, that's the kind of thing that would never happen in the world of TV or film. This got me we are clearly now. missing some sort of key point here. We have our two sides clearly established, but who or why? What exactly are we supposed to be rooting for here? Exactly. Well, that, my friends, is where the most recent episodes come in. At the end of episode 47, we see a G-Man toilet destroy the POV cameraman, just like we've seen him do in many other episodes before. But then, through the lens of our fallen camera, we see someone coming into frame. And it's not just anyone, it's a person. We haven't seen a human in the series for literally dozens of episodes, and yet, out of the blue, a person appears? And it's not just any person either. This character looks an awful lot like Defuk's channel avatar, doesn't it? Like I mentioned earlier, humans didn't really play much of a role in this franchise prior to this very moment. In the beginning, humans were just cannon fodder for the toilet overlords, but now we have one of these humans. In fact, the human who's making the series inserting himself back into the narrative. And not just here, he's also hidden indoors during the opening seconds of episode 45. But why? Wow. One does not simply self-insert their avatar into a 2 billion view a month series so lightly when the story is so deep in its own narrative, unless you have a greater role to play in the story you're about to tell. Defuk clearly has a love and passion for this style of Video. Before Skibbity exploded, he had created dozens of videos in his SFM YouTube poop format. In fact, his two most popular long-form videos on his channel are, still to this day, SFM animations that he made years ago. That being said, I also don't think he totally dislikes the world of TV, movies, and music either. Why would he make them the protagonists of his epic internet series if he did? I think Defuk, like many other creators, aspires to do this work on a professional level. And you can tell that desire for a professional, higher caliber of work in the way that he's handled the Skibbity Toilet series. Each episode has seen an escalation of the animation, the character work getting better, the ideas bigger and grander. He has literally turned what started as a YouTube poop into an epic action movie that hangs with some of the best content that I've seen. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Fast and the Furious, how it was like basically starting out just this, you know, this racing movie and now it's turned into like this <laughs> big old thing where there's like, you know, like battles and like it's not even really about cars anymore, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. In this year, so what gives? What is the story that he's trying to tell us through Skibbity Toilets? Well, to me, it's clear from the story that's laid out in front of us that Defuk sees himself quite literally in the middle of these two loves of his that are currently at odds. Notice what his character is doing throughout the series so far. He's picking up the broken remains of the camera heads, the broken remains of traditional media. Creators like Defuk got mm. into making this kind of content on the internet, not just because it was fun and easy, but deep down, they wanted to emulate the TV, film, and music that they enjoyed consuming. Defuk wants to take the elements that make the new and and old media so great and fuse them together. He is the merge point. He is the next step in the evolution of the medium. He's the missing wow. link here. I mean, look no further than Skibbity Toilet itself. The series starts off as a simple gag that latched onto a viral internet meme in episode one. But by episode 50, suddenly we have cinematic camera changes, complex sound design, dazzling Thanks. visuals and special effects that feel like they belong more in the MCU than a YouTube poop. Skibbity exactly. Toilet isn't an epic takedown of toxic internet content or the corrupt industrial bigwigs at the studios. Instead, it's evidence that these these two things can co-mingle. These two titans of entertainment can coexist together and be stronger as a result. That the best of both worlds can be brought together for the greater good of entertainment. So where does this franchise end up going from here? Well, we have ourselves our new protagonist in Defuk, who will eventually take center stage, taking it upon himself to save the world that he loves, the worlds of internet memedom and mainstream media. He's going to turn out to be the Neo of this universe. He is the chosen so one. He'll be the one the who'll chosen be able to one. marry both sides of this war together and show that that if the two sides put aside their differences, they can create something truly magical. Or who knows, maybe you'll get a movie deal out of it. And then truly, you've had the merging of the worlds. But hey, speaking of blending ideas from multiple that industries into cool. one magical product, cool. I want to thank our sponsor. Like imagine like a, a, a YouTube series turning into an actual cinematic movie in theaters. I'm not showing this. I it, it's already getting to that quality. The quality is already there, so it, it's. I mean, you know. for today's video, Opera, with its built in free VPN and ad block. Wait, I think this is. Browser that unites every job unto itself. After opening 50 Skibbity videos. 
internet into one seamless experience. Here at Theorist, when we're researching videos, keeping tabs on all of our tabs can feel like a job unto itself. After opening 50 skibbity videos and dozens of fan wiki pages, it becomes a bit overwhelming to even find where the script Sheesh. I was working on went. That's why I love Opera One's new Tab Islands feature, which allows me to easily split my tabs into groups that make sense for my work, make my when? browsing experience truly makes it easier to brainstorm ideas in the description and in oh, the sorry, I really added the end. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to Film Theory for actually breaking this down, man. It's, it's kind of interesting now. It's like, who am I rooting for now? You know, like at first I was rooting for the cameraman, but now it's like, you know, I have sympathy for the, you know, the toilets, the skibbity toilets, you know, like I don't know. Like, I get, I feel like at heart, I'm gonna still be rooting for the cameraman just because they kind of have my heart right now, but it's kind of crazy because it's like it's like you said like you said like it's it's media now versus like nostalgia you know like you know i'm on you know like i don't know man oh they got me conflicted i don't know what to choose cameraman it is make sure you smack that subscribe hit that like button thank you for watching deuces